Hello again everyone, it is galaxy season and in this video we're going to take a look at some galaxies that I captured this year and a new OAG configuration, well a couple of configurations and then the final one using the large V2 adapter from Celestron which made a big difference at hitting the actual 146 millimeter mark as you'll see. You're watching Astronomically Speaking. I'm Mark Murin, and all this and more is coming up next. One of the challenges of doing the OAG setup has been getting that exact 146 millimeter distance from the threads of the um, reducer or the telescope itself if you're at f10 so f7 or f10 and this year I decided to not use my last setup that you saw in my other OAG video that had the mini filter wheel this time around I'm using the star zona filter slider drawer so once i change that the measurements all changed uh, that slider alone is 17 and a half millimeters as you'll see here in the the uh, diagram i made and i actually measured the celestron oag this time and came up with 30.1 millimeters for its actual thickness so it was a little different than what their specs said and most people have found this to be the case now adding in the filter you should be at 140 147.05 I think it is and I had a pretty exact measurement this time I knew exactly what the total would be by adding all the parts together there was no guessing game involved now before I got to the v2 setup using a Celestron v2 adapter I used the parts I had already had I came pretty close the results were okay but I wanted to be closer the other segment here in this video is the light pollution problem I have to deal with um, that I have managed to mitigate using tarps and an umbrella. Um, it is what it is. I'm hoping to resolve some of the issues with the business behind me in the next few weeks. They've managed to fix the middle light finally and the right light was fixed before. Third light still leaks out light and causes me to have to put up this umbrella in the back. But uh, that's uh, still a work in progress. The one light I can't block is the shopping center and I had a target the needle galaxy in the beginning of the video there was a line showing up on the video and that line was from the light pollution reflecting that did not get removed from flats so in this video the three targets i chose to do the first one is the needle galaxy otherwise known as the flying saucer galaxy and it is a great looking edge-on spiral galaxy it's a lot like our perspective of looking to the center of the Milky Way. Uh, it is a distance of 38 million light years away. It's about 13 billion years old. This, I managed to capture about 15 hours of data on it, which was my bare minimum for this target. The other galaxy I've got in this video is M90. It's a distance of 58.71 million light years away and i captured about 12.3 hours and the last galaxy in this video is ngc 2903 it's a distance of 30.66 million light years away and uh, i gathered 12.3 hours on this target just wanted to point out the final configuration of the uh, celestron v2 setup the main thing here to point out is that i used the eyepiece extension not the other adapter that was shown in the photo. And that's it. That's the final layout and everything works great. Just a small footnote. I've actually got this um, Velcro strip around the drawer that helped to prevent any light leak. I was finding that there was a little bit of light leak. So I wrapped the Velcro around and that solved part of that. All right, I've got a string of several clear nights in a row here. Uh, this is the Needle Galaxy again, and tonight, after some adjustments, I have the guiding down to 0 0.53 at f7, and it's doing splendid. And now we're swimming nicely at around 0 0.5, and the 
ratio um, needs to be 0 0.49 for the ASI 294 pixel size and the F7 1960 focal length uh, for that camera. So that's where it needs to guide at to have perfectly round stars. It's close enough. Usually if it's within 0.10 or more, um, it's actually good enough. So doing well, I'm trying to gather as much data as possible here to look at the sequence settings. I have it going at 180 seconds. I have it set to start guiding on start, slew to target and centers, and I have the autofocus set to on. And on here you can see I'm good to about 5.50 a.m. I'm back on the imaging tab, we can see star count. Getting between 43 and 50 stars. Now this was before I um, put uh, before I put the tarp up. I was only in the, in the uh, around 30, 27 to 30 stars. Now the test tarp I've been using to block out some of the shopping center light that reflects into the dome. I was able to boost that all the way up to 50. So that was very helpful to do that so far. So now the scope will slew on over. I've got the uh, equipment set to a 63 second uh, delay after slewing. Uh, that allows enough time for the dome to get into position. And now it begins doing the centering. Here's a look at, look at where it's at now just after Meridian. You can see my test tarp here over there to the left and if I turn off the lights it should be completely dark. Pretty close to it. And for my Rigel end step I have that set to um, initial offset is at 4 and I'm using a 225 step size that seems to work fairly well most of the time and a nine second exposure setting there and i'm using two for the binning here and i have it trends on parabolic and parabolic this is for at f7 it's a little different when i use the hyperstar now i do run into this a lot the first or rather second spot here on the left is sometimes higher than the right so you end up with this little dip in the v-curve but as long as overall it's mostly a v-curve it usually works out fairly well it has settled on position 246174 so i let that run and then by 6 a.m or 6 15 i i have a script that runs and closes the dome automatically at that point and that just runs a um, a uh, a batch file which calls a VBS file and in the batch file I also can turn things off on the uh, remote web power switch. One of the things I have uh, picked up on to get better focusing is that the focus knob on the Celestron for SCTs should go as a last turn counterclockwise which is towards the infinity symbol infinite so i'm going to repeat the same process in nina taking a star slightly out of focus and then bringing it back in until it starts to become in focus from the time it moves until it stops moving from the original out point to that point where it stops moving and starts to go back and focus that will be the backlash setting in nina which will be set to overshoot on one of the new features okay here we are in nina i have a set position now i've moved out on this one star over here to 248.706 i've set manual steps to 50. now i'm going to move inward and take note when it starts to move, when, it, when the star shifts position but doesn't change focus. That point is the mirror flop. And then when it stops moving and begins to focus again, that's the end of the mirror flop and back to focus. So from this point 
to the point where it starts to go back in focus after it has been moving is the backlash we're looking for. So I believe I have that right. If anybody disagrees, have any comments, please let me know. So here we go. I'm going to go in 50 steps at a time, and we're going to look for that movement, and then we're going to look for it to go back to focus and then stop. One click, two clicks, three, there it's moving, four, five, six, seven, right there I believe, do one more, that was eight, and yeah, it is getting smaller and it didn't move. It looks like 7 times 50, 350 is what I came up with that time for a backlash value. So now I would go into Nina's imaging section, no, uh, equipment, yeah, equipment section. And for the backlash in, out, I set this to the value I just came up with, 350, and leave the other value at 0. <clears throat> but here's the key. The final movement as far as this goes, needs to be counterclockwise on the telescope. And I have to check it when we do an autofocus and see if the final movement is counterclockwise. There we go, the final curve looking good and a lot better than it was before. I'm continuing to focus on these galaxies here with the OAG. Tonight I'm doing a couple targets at the same time and right now I have the target uh, NGC 2903 in the scope going for 25 frames for tonight and the guiding has been good it was down to 0.43 at one point and the goal is again to get to about 0.49 all right here we are on another night of using the Celestron V2 adapter configuration and the guiding has been exceptional tonight. Anywhere from 0.43 uh, all the way up to right now like 0.55 and that's with dithering every two frames. And I'm on the NGC 2903 Galaxy gathering more data. And I also have multi-star guiding on uh, that is in the guide advanced settings and I have it set to look for a minimum of 2.0 and use multiple stars and that helps decrease the total RMS and uh, when it's all said and done I'll have a series of galaxy images to wrap up this video mm -hmm.